Well, buy now, pay later firm Klarna recently launching a new subscription offering for its customers called Klarna Plus. For eight bucks a month, the plan features no added service fees, rewards points, and exclusive discounts. Joining us now, Klarna CEO Sebastian Simiotowski. Sebastian, it's great to have you back on the show. I'm going to start right here uh, with the subscription plan. What does this enable from a buy now, pay later standpoint? Um, and how does it put you, I guess, in even deeper competition with, for example, the credit card companies? Right. I think it's important to remember that, like, I mean, we have a belief that the uh, installment, uh, interest-free installment product that we offer should be available to everyone. And so this service is not like for that. It's like in addition to having the availability of that uh, uh, paying for install free interest-free installments, you can in addition to add this, and this gives you additional access to, as you mentioned, double points and, and, uh, and other uh, pre pre uh, premium services. Yeah. So what are you seeing in terms of the consumer? I mean, we just we just finished out 2023 and whether it was the U.S., whether it was internationally in Europe, for example, I mean, things have been more resilient, seem to be more resilient than than everybody anticipated. Um, and we've heard it even from some of the CEOs of some of the companies that reported earnings just in the past week or so that consumer spending remains resilient. Is that what you're seeing across Klarna's platform as well? Uh, yes, I think we were a little bit nervous looking at, you know, uh, Black Friday back in Christmas and so forth, that uh, it felt like some of the additional volume that we've seen in growth was driven by more discount. But since then, I would agree that the spending has been more resilient. I am still, however, one of the people who are a little bit fearful of the potential effect of uh, AI and how it could, in, you know, impact unemployment figure, uh, numbers this year, right? And we're still seeing a lot of uh, layoffs in a lot of industries, especially in tech, right? So this obviously could still have an impact on uh, credit uh, credit ratings and uh, and people's ability to spend money as well. Interesting. So, Sebastian, I want to go back to this new offering of yours uh, to, to understand it better, because uh, traditionally, right, there are retailers who are working directly with you to offer Klarna payment. Uh, but, but for retailers that aren't, now you've got this one-time card where people can use Klarna to pay. And, and there was a service fee associated with that. Now, it, it's almost like you got an Amazon Prime style, $100 a year almost subscription, where now they don't have to pay that fee. Tell me about the strategy here and how you're going to continue building out this membership program uh, where, where more the consumer is subsidizing it because of convenience versus the retailer. I feel you did the job for me already there, but <laughs> but I, I uh, no, that's entirely right, right? I mean, one of the key elements for us has been that we realized quickly that if Klarna was going to grow and become a true contender in this trillion dollar market opportunity that credit card industry and kind of this kind of consumer credit encompasses, we obviously have been extremely grateful and helpful in uh, being able to distribute us with a half a million merchants and growing that merchant network very fast. But at the same point of time, we also wanted to offer a product that allowed consumers to use us everywhere. Uh, even on merchants like Amazon, you mentioned, who currently does not offer Klarna today, but now we can use Klarna on Amazon. You can use it on any website and in-store as well with these services. And so this is uh, something that's in great demand by our consumers and they see a huge advantage of it. And this allows us to, you know, further accelerate the growth of that part of the business. And Sebastian, how much of this is a desire to move into prime credit more aggressively in an environment where delinquencies might be rising? Well, the surprise is that, like, there's been this misconception sometimes that our product attracts, you know, more of a subprime audience, and that's actually entirely not true. It's the opposite. And it's funny because already in 15, McKinsey put a report together where they analyzed the U.S. credit card market and realized that there was this huge group, which they uh, referred to as people that were basically tired of credit cards and the bad practices of the banks, and they were looking for alternatives, and they wanted fixed installments, they wanted zero interest, they wanted clear terms. And they are very conscious. Uh, they want to, they're self-aware avoiders was the actual term being used. And what was constituted is that they actually represent 20% of the credit card market in the US among consumers. And our product basically fits exactly into that category. And they, in general, we've seen, I mean, our credit card, our losses are basically 20, 30% below credit card industry standards. So it is very clear that the audience using these products are more self-aware, conscious, uh, because, you know, they want an interest-free credit. That sounds better than mm -hmm. having a credit card you max out on. And remember, our average to outstanding debt is $100 compared to 5000 on the card, right? Yeah. Very quickly, Sebastian. Is 2024 the year you go public? 
<laughs> we will see. Time will tell. But uh, okay. it's, it's definitely not uh, unthinkable. Okay. Sebastian Timotowski, CEO of Klarna, thanks for joining us.